Good morning, everybody. Mike Vaki, PrincetonTrader.com, here for NTMarkets.com with your Monday morning pre-market webcast. Okay, daily chart of the E-mini, and, you know, we are at or near what the vast majority of people thought we were, you know, the target or whatever you want to call it for a test, which is this high from February the 1st up at 1940. We've traded this high as 38.75. The interesting part today is what, what are 1940s intentions? Is it going to be that kind of a double top? Is it going to be that easy? Or is it just going to be a way station, you know, on the way to going and dealing with the upper band, which comes in at about 1952 and change today? Um, I'm going into today with an open mind. I want to see how uh, how price reacts off the open. I want to see who controls the open, whether we're making, you know, lower highs or higher lows and where it goes from there. So my suggestion would be that you do the same. Do not assume that this rally is over simply because we were up at 1940. And do not assume that we are going to blast off like a rocket ship because we headed up here, pulled back for a couple days, and, and you know we could be breaking out to another leg up. Either scenario is pretty much equally plausible. And when you get into that situation, the best thing to do, and the nice part about being a smaller trader, is that you don't have to decide. You don't have to, you're not, you're not committed. Neither side is committed to you. Why do you have to commit to them? These are the days where if you're, you know, ideologically bullish or ideologically bearish, that can get you into some serious trouble, very serious trouble, because you're not going to see the forest for the trees. So just be cautious. Let price tell you if 1940 wants to be the end of the line or the start of another move up. If we head up into the upper band, then they, you know, the, the bears run the risk of, of allowing a band ride. The bands are pretty wide. I mean, the, the Bollinger bandwidth this morning is, you know, as I'm, as I'm speaking, it's 6.75. Those are not tight bands. Um, but the bands weren't particularly tight uh, at the beginning of, uh, of 2016 either, and we got a nice little band ride out of that. So I'm not letting that factor into my thinking too much one way or the other. Um, I'm much more concerned with what is 40 going to do. And it's not just what's 40 going to do, you know, on the first touch. It's what's 40 going to do after today is over into tomorrow. You know, either it's going to be a ceiling of consistent resistance, or if they climb up over the top of it, it has the opportunity to become fairly solid, you know, support in a, you know, prior resistance equals support kind of a deal. And that's the kind of base that you can build for higher, okay? Because you've got this 1940 high here, 40 even. You've got 46.75 here. You know, so this 40 to 45 area has been a problem. It's been a problem, you know, all year long. If they can break above it and then hold it, then that's the kind of foothold that the bulls can use to to go up and eventually test the purple line here, the 200-day exponential moving average. And don't lose sight of the fact that we could go all the way up, touch the 200-day exponential moving average, you know, hang out there for a few days and come back off, and the bear trend remains intact as far as the overall market is concerned. So are we above the mid-band on the daily? Yes. Has that had me in buy the dip modes the last few days? Yes. But overall... Unless the purple line goes back to being support and this market decides it wants to live above the purple line, ultimately, the bears still control the tape uh, on longer term time frames. All right. Everybody have a great day. Follow us on Twitter at Prince and Trader. Check out the website. Check out the chat room. I'll be back tomorrow morning with another webcast. Trade them well.